uh, in my presentation, I will give you uh, a short overview uh, to the project reverse that we are working on since 2020. Um, it's about um, the ecological effects of railways on wildlife, and I think it's a very good, it's, it supplements uh, a lot of, uh, of, of um, uh, contents that, that John just presented to us. Um, why? We have to. Do, we are living in a in a in a, in a century or in an age of multiple crises. Uh, we had to deal with COVID uh, a few years ago, and still do sometimes. We are the next wave is uh, the recession that we have to cope. Uh, above that all, we don't. Uh, we 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 are not. Uh, we should not forget about the climate change that is um, threatening the global community but there's also a fourth wave and i uh, introduce it here it's the biodiversity collapse so it's something that uh, is not that well recognized in the public as uh, as the other three waves but um yeah it's getting more and more obvious that the the biosphere is suffering a lot from our activities and uh, it's it's time that railways also uh, take over the responsibility in, in tackling this issue that was one of the reasons that we, uh, um, as, uh, as UIC and the Sustainable Land Use Group, started to, to think about uh, a project that is mainly focusing on the effects, on the ecological effects of railways. Um, in 2015, you all know, humanity agreed on the plan, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Um, unfortunately, since then, there were some developments that dragged us away from that path but there's not much time to go until 2030 to achieve all these goals and the reverse project from uh, of sustainable land use is especially of course addressing goal number 15 life on land so what what is our uh what is our um, vision we have to meet the the growing demand for mobility without further harming the environment and uh, we as a railway think we have a very good uh, um, position in this uh, in this case uh, just to underline that uh, of course we are a very land use efficient mode of transport if you compare it to um, motorized individual traffic uh, we only need uh, we need 14 times less space to transport one person and this is a very strong argument yeah? especially in Europe where space is limited where room uh, is limited um, we can um, um, uh, support an efficient land use with our mode of transport. Uh, of course, we also consider railways as a green corridor. And um, this is an image taken from, from internal regulations of, our, of my company, which shows, and of course, it's a bit idealized, <laughs> green corridor is a lateral cut through a um, double-tracked line. And that's the way we would like to see it. Um, maybe I over here. We differentiate between different zones. Of course, we have the track zone, which is an intensive care zone where we don't accept, we can't accept any vegetation due to safety reasons. Then we have a, a, a zone where we would like to uh, only have grass, maybe uh, short shrubs, but no woods, and then next zone we um, want to have no trees no large growing trees or copies and then uh, we of course also need trees or forests especially in alpine regions as a protective um, facility for the railway so we call it protective forests uh, which brings us to one of the nature-based solutions or ecological services that we need for our uh, uh, safe operation um, so this is what our maintenance staff has to look at, um, and this is the, 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 the picture that they should produce. Um, this image shows you uh, a new high-speed rail where it's easy uh, to fulfill this demand, but of course we have a lot of other tracks um, where it's not that easy. Um, and being an, an ecologist, I also uh, would like to draw your attention to the specific um, factors that are uh, propagating the, uh, the biodiversity on railway land. 
For instance, there is the uh, chemical and physical um, uh, soil conditions that are very specific on railway tracks, especially old dams are very valuable because they are very low in nutrients. We have a specific microclimate there uh, by, caused by the light temperature and water conditions. Uh, these linear uh, structures, we already heard about it, they also function as, as habitat networks. Um, we have a, uh, a small pattern habitat mix of nutrient poor, nutrient rich, dry, wet, bright, shady, uh, which makes, which contributes to this biodiversity that we find on railway land. Of course, we also have uh, intermediate disturbances through maintenance or construction works, which are uh, uh, an impact in a limited time and space, but uh, um, can also contribute to pioneer vegetation, for instance. Um, yeah, the, uh, the maintenance works of ejectment areas uh, like the ditches, uh, embankments and cuts are also adding to this value. And of course, in some cases, very specific cases, railway land also uh, protects uh, um, rare species uh, from collectors who are looking for them in, in open nature. So what were, what were the objectives of, of reverse? Uh, first of all, we wanted to avoid uh, additional habitat fragmentation and enhance biodiversity. Uh, we wanted to identify um, how the railways are threatening the survival of wildlife, uh, of course, describe and promote measures as a contribution to the uh, SDGs and also provide a general understanding of the issue. So we had to uh, share the, our experiences and knowledges. Uh, we had to motivate, or we have to motivate the transportation planners to consider biodiversity in their planning work and also provide a general understanding. Our first delivery is already published. Um, it was published in May last year. Um, you see the, the table of contents there. Um, the, the core part of it is the strategic goals and action guide with 13 uh, fields of action. I will not read out all of them. Uh, I think the publication is also available in hard copy outside. So if you're not, uh, if you haven't got it so far, you can take it from from the from the, from outside. Um, I will only I will only um, go into detail in, in in three of this of these uh, strategic goals. One major uh, constraint that was uh, that was um, mentioned several times is the lack of resources and skills and knowledge of the people and of the staff. So it's uh, uh, of highly importance to provide uh, training facilities or training programs for the people that they uh, value uh, biodiversity. The, um, example, the, the pictures so show you example that we are doing in, in Austria, where I myself created a training program for, uh, for, for our infrastructure staff uh, to also go outside and, and, and experience biodiversity on, on railway land. Another thing is that we are have, facing the problem that, um, that it's not easy to find indicators or common agreed KPIs for biodiversity, uh, different than to the, uh, for, uh, for the climate issue, where you have uh, clear uh, standards and you know what to report, you, have, you can quantify your emissions uh, and report, um, or also for um, vegetation management, we have our standards and we have our quantifiable um, um, numbers, but uh, for, for biodiversity, it's still, uh, it's still not uh, found so far. Uh, there will also be new standards approaching very, uh, uh, very closely in 2025, I think it's for the first time, we will also have to deal with the environment, uh, European sustainable reporting standards. And one of them is, of course, addressing biodiversity and ecosystem services. And if you look in these standards, you will, you will uh, easily see that it uh, will be very challenging, very, very challenging for, for huge uh, infrastructure, uh, railway infrastructure companies to meet these requirements. 
but we are on the way and we of course we, we, we postulated some ideas how to measure but of course uh, um, it's a long way to go and the other thing is that of course we we wanted to uh, address once more the mitigation hierarchy that has to be uh, uh, considered when you're uh, have a biodiversity impact uh, you have to compensate it through different steps like uh, first of all of course avoidance then what can't be avoided you should minimize what you can't minimize or avoid you should restore and uh, at the end usually there was the offset but the new idea is to go even further like we heard from from john barley before is even the uh, the goal to contribute to actively contribute to to a net gain of biodiversity um, but if you want to do that of course you need to um, to also monitor the outcomes which brings us back to the to the kpis and to the indicators uh, if you have not agreed on on indicators or kpis it's also not so easy to um, to prove that you really uh, uh, achieve the net gain goal the second delivery of our project is still to come. Um, we are expecting it to be ready quite uh, in a few weeks. Uh, and the main uh, core part of, of, uh, of this publication will be that we want uh, that we will um, have guidelines for different railway assets. So we divided it in uh, the typical uh, railway assets that all the railway managers know, like the track bed, the drainage system, bridges, tunnels, overhead power lines, etc. And we um, elaborated uh, measures and um, a biodiversity uh, uh, supporting uh, um, case studies to to enhance biodiversity on these different assets of railway. Um, my last, or not, not the last, but the, uh, um, one of the final slides shows you some uh, examples that we did in the last years in Austria. Uh, like, um, as I said before, for overhead lines, uh, we tried to make them visible for birds by installing discs, or um, we uh, <coughs> also we Work, are working on selective mowing regimes for, for our green uh, areas around the stations. We built artificial roofs and nests for swallows. We try to, uh, to design the green uh, area around the stations, insect friendly, uh, and many other things. So to come to a conclusion, um, well-managed infrastructure will bring biodiversity benefits and also should help us to support a safer and more reliable railway operation. Um, and the next step after we finalized reverse will be that um, we want to have a deeper look into ecosystem services, uh, ecosystem services that we are all uh, depending on and we are not uh, really aware of. So the, the next project that we want to deal with in, in the Sustainable Land Use Group will be ECOWAR, ECO for Rail. Uh, and I think you will hear about it later on from Neil. So that's all from my side. I um, hope you got a little impression of what Reverse is dealing with. And yeah, I'm on your disposal for any further questions. <laughs>